What is the meaning of life? That's the question we've been discussing on this program for about six months now. And you may wonder, how on earth can you discuss a simple question like that for six months? Well, it's easy in these days because so many of us fail to see the wood for the trees. That is, we're so taken up with everyday activities, we're so distracted with the round of responsibilities and duties that we have, we're so entertained often by the video and television and movie world that we hardly have time to reflect on why we're doing it all, why we're here at all, what the point of our existence is. And actually, it's that bewilderment that so often sends many of us into neurotic behavior and is causing a lot of the flight that we see to drugs and to anything that will take our mind off the sheer meaninglessness of our existence. And so that's partly why we're trying to deal with that question, because so many of us today are not dealing with it and have no time to deal with it. And yet it's our background underlying frustration and concern about this question which is dragging many of us into a neurotic approach to life that is virtually crazy and insane. So that's why we're trying to deal with the question, what is the meaning of life? And that's why we've been talking about it now for about six months. And what perhaps may drive you crazy is the way I often go back over some of the discussion that we've had. I do that because the chief mark of our life today is fragmentation, like a synthesis. Uh, everything is broken up. Everything is breaking up. Uh, nobody seems to be able to find one single basis for any approach to life though all of us are trying in various ways. But the chief mark of our life today seems to be the fragmentation of knowledge and the lack of ability any longer in our educational system to synthesize what we really think with the way we live. And so one of the reasons I do go over again the basis of our discussion is to remind you that we are basing our discussion on intellectual premises that are respectable and that are valid and that are, are capable of being analyzed and examined. And so I would remind you that we have said the meaning of life is that we have been created by a personal, intelligent being that is beyond all our finite abilities to conceive of, and that that intelligent being is loving, and that he has revealed himself in a human being that lived, who lived in the first century of our era, and that we can document historically by manuscripts like the Vaticanus, the Alexandrinus, and the Sinaiticus, some of which are in the British Museum, we can document this man's life, that he actually did live and said the things that he is reported to have done and said. And that this is that person that is so often regarded simply as a curse word by many of us, that person Jesus of Nazareth that he is actually the son of the maker of the universe. Now, if you want to go over some of the intellectual undergirding that proves that, then please do send for some of the earlier cassettes that we have shared this past year. But we have proceeded beyond that and have got to the point where we see that his explanation of the reality behind the universe, his explanation of the meaning of life, or his answer to the question, why are we alive, is that his father, our creator, made us with the same capacities as he himself has, except, of course, that they are finite and not infinite, 
but he made us with the same intellectual and emotional and spiritual capacities as he himself has, so that we would become like him. And that's really the purpose of our lives here on earth. This is just a short 70 or 80 year spell during which we have the opportunity to become like him or to reject that whole idea and just be what we want to be ourselves. And that's the purpose of our lives. Now, the way he has for us to become like him is that he has put each one of us here in this world to do certain things to help him develop it. In other words, he created the world, but the completion of the creation he has put in our hands. So he creates uh, not only an Einstein to take us a little further in our understanding of the infinite, but he creates a policeman uh, whose job is to bring order into the moral and the behavioral life of our society. Uh, he creates uh, a secretary uh, whose responsibility is to bring order into the expressions of her colleagues and her associates as she types letters to other people. Uh, he creates a mother whose responsibility is to bring beauty and order into the home uh, over which she presides. And so the Father who has made us has given every one of us certain talents and abilities that he knows are necessary to develop his world according to his will. And in the process of us doing that, or of our doing that, we will be made by his own life, spirit, like him. And then, of course, we will engage in a completely new life which will have infinite possibilities. And that he has mercifully not shown us because with our finite minds we could make no sense of it. But that's the meaning of our lives. He, there is a personal intelligent being who has created you with certain abilities that are necessary in order to develop his world according to his will. And as you engage upon that pursuit under his guidance and by his power and by his life, you will become like him yourself. Now, the amazing thing is this, of course, that you are absolutely unique, that you're a one-off, as they say today. You're the only version of you that he has created, that he will ever create. And uh, if you do not fulfill the purpose that he has for you, and if you do not come into a likeness to him so that you will be able to be his friend forever, then there is a sense at which the mighty creator of the universe will miss something, will always miss you. There is no one to take your place. That's why you feel you're unique at times. And of course, the problem with the present world is we're all in that situation. We are all unique. But unless we're in some way connected with his plan, we feel that everybody else is ordinary and we alone are unique. And of course, that's what brings some of the problems into our present life. So the meaning of our lives is clear and plain. We have been made by an intelligent personal being like him and he has put us here on earth so that we will become utterly like him in inner character, so that we will be able to take part with him in an infinite development of the universe after this life is over. And the way to become like him is to begin to exercise the abilities that he has given us under his power and by his life. Now, that's exactly what we're beginning to discuss in these in next few months. How do we live the way we were meant to live? Indeed, what way did he intend us to meet, live? And in what way did he intend our personality to operate? Because part of the problem that many of us has, have is we don't really understand how these personalities were meant to operate. And that's why we make all kinds of threshing attempts to be the kinds of people that our parents, our teachers, we ourselves, the writers of books think we ought to be. And yet we 
are repeatedly finding ourselves struggling against personality traits and habits of emotion and thinking that seem very inexpedient to us and very difficult to reconcile with the attitudes of other people. That's what we'd like to begin to talk about again tomorrow, how our personality is meant to work in this